Hi, I'm Mike Swanbaum, and in this problem what we're going to do is figure out a couple things. One is uh, what side of a pulley, or maybe more appropriately called a spool, should we wrap a rope around in order to keep this system in equilibrium? And then second of all, how big should we make the radius of that pulley or spool uh, so that it holds the whole system in equilibrium? So we'll do that first part first. And uh, to do that first part, we'll actually look at it and see that the 400 Newton weight here would tend to try to rotate that very first gear in a counterclockwise direction. Okay, And we know that each time that there's a mate between gears, a, a mesh between gears, it reverses the direction. So that means we would see a clockwise is what it would want to do on the next gear over here, and then it would want to uh, go counterclockwise again. This is if the only influence on the system was the 400 Newton weight over on the left side. Uh, and so what we need to do is figure out how would we counter the idea that this is the direction it would want to accelerate uh, if we didn't have anything else going on. And so we have to look at the gear over here, the 63 tooth gear, and see that we would need to put something on a force on it um, in a direction that would counter the direction that it would want to turn if the only force we had was the 400 Newton force. So that implies that we would need to have the rope come off of the right side and that's why we would answer B for the first part of this problem. So that's the easy part. The next part is we need to figure out uh, the radius that this pulley would need to be which is right here. Uh, and so to figure out what that radius should be uh, what we're going to do is first of all start on the end where we know a little bit more and figure out the torque that is applied by the 400 newton weight hanging on the four centimeter radius uh, spool that's over on that left side um, and i tell you what i'm going to go ahead and name these things uh, a b and c okay that is completely fine for you to name things if they are not already named in the problem that you are handed it's okay for you to make up your own names if that helps you to write variables that are more um, descriptive and, and help you to know what you're doing. So what we have here is the torque around A should just be equal to the amount of force uh, being pulled on uh, that pulley there, 400 newtons, multiplied by the radius of that uh, pulley. So we've got 4 centimeters. 400 newtons times 4 centimeters gives me 1600 newton centimeters. And it might be tempting for you at this point to want to uh, put that in a common, a common unit system like base units for the SI system, for example. There's really not a reason because at the end of this problem you see that the units of length are going to end up in centimeters anyway. So at this point I'm just going to leave it alone. The next thing we want to do is figure out how does that torque translate and sort of uh, work its way over to uh, the shaft over here at C. And what I want you to see here is that this gear in the middle ha is a special kind of gear. It is called an idler. Okay, Idler gears um, are ones where you basically see that they have torque input on one location and then taken off on the other location. They are not compound gears and uh, since there's not any other torques being applied other than the two locations where they mesh with other gears then this uh, just is, is a pure idler and it doesn't even matter how many teeth that that gear has on it and so what we can do to figure out the torque over at C, T sub C is we can just completely ignore the 45 tooth gear and instead put on the torque that we have over at A 1600 newton centimeters and multiply by the ratio that gets us to uh, what it is at C. We remember that the bigger gear carries more torque and so the ratio that we need to get over to C is going to end up being 1 such that it decreases that amount of torque that we would predict and that ends up giving us 1600 times 63 over 72 which gives me 1400 newton centimeters. Okay, now that's how much torque we need to put on this uh, spool over at C. 
And so what we need to do is figure out that radius r. Uh, and to do that, let's go ahead and remind ourselves that torque is equal to uh, force times radius. And if we solve this for radius, this ends up giving us torque over force. Okay, And so what we're going to do is now is take that uh, equation and solve for radius. Radius is going to be equal to the torque we need over there which is 1400 uh, Newton centimeters. Okay, And we will divide that by the force of 375 Newtons. Alright, so once I do that It ends up giving me a value of seven, excuse me, three point seven three <clears throat> centimeters. Okay, and that answer would be E. I hope this has been useful for you, and if it has, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel.